This is Mike from FearShop.com. Make sure you like this video and leave your comments. Also, subscribe to the channel and set up notifications so you know when the next video drops. Now let's get into it. Today we're talking about Top 10 Horror Anthologies. Before we get into the Top 10 list, let's have a look at some of the honorable mentions. Cat's Eye from 1985. When you produced as much short fiction as Stephen King, have had so many of your novels turned into feature films, it only makes sense that your short stories become fodder for countless anthologies. The man has likely inspired more anthology outings than any other author, except perhaps for Edgar Allan Poe. Cat's Eye collects a few stories from King's well-loved first collection of short stories, Night Shift, while tossing in an original tale for good measure. Its framing device is a good one, as all three stories are seen from a perspective more or less of a cat who passes idly through the first two before becoming the de facto protagonist of the third. The strength of King's source material shines. Quitter's Ink is a very creepy uh, in a dystopian future sort of way, while the, the ledge is reminiscent of an excellent creep show segment, uh, something to tide you over. Even general, it's silly joy as it pits its cat, now the film's main character, as it were, against a tiny little troll gremlin determined to kill a nine-year-old Drew Barrymore in her sleep. It's like someone reimagined Tom and Jerry as a horror film. In some strange way, though, it works. Next up is Asylum from 1972. By the early 70s, Britain's Amicus Productions had essentially turned the production of horror anthologies into a science and Asylum might be their overall strongest effort. Certainly is one of the most solid, if not obvious, framing stories set in the Asylum, where a new doctor must observe all the patients and is giving the test of guessing which one is the hospital's former administrator, now completely insane. Based on the writings of psycho author Robert Block, each story affords more of a dignified, polished feel compared with some of the other campier amicus anthologies. They're appropriately creepy, running the gamut from a tale about the dismembered body of a murdered wife returning to life to seek revenge, to a bizarre little ditty about a scientist seeking to transfer his soul into a tiny robotic doll. All in all though, Asylum comprises a variety of strong performances and appearances from the likes of Peter Cushing and Charlotte Rampling while possessing a more cinematic presence than the silly framing story of something like Tales from a Crypt. That, and there's the Night of Bald Mountain you can handle. Next up is Trilogy of Terror from 1975. Many horror anthologies, especially older ones, are known to modern audiences specifically for a single entry, and this is essentially the case in Trilogy of Terror. This first aired in ABC in March of 1975, although all three segments star actress Karen Black and are based on the stories of Richard Matheson. It's Amelia, the captivated audience. A quick, a quirky tale about a young woman who lives alone in a high-rise apartment where she's menaced by an African Zuni fetish doll. It magically comes to life, wielding a spear and ludicrously large length. It's a silly, uh, racially questionable antagonist, but its design is also surprisingly unnerving, although it's hard to take the story seriously with the over-top performances. The other two parts of this particular anthology are competent but less zany, mainly relying on black sex appeal. Amelia remains a highlight in a cheesy 70s sort of way. Next up is VHS from 2012. Horror anthologies are by nature almost always uneven in terms of quality, but there's one constant. It's that fewer is better than most of the time. That's one of the factors that helped VHS work better than, say, the unrestrained insanity of the ABCs of death. VHS also bears a more coherent framing narrative, featuring segments by some of the best young directors in horror at the time. Uh, such as Adam Wingard and Ty West, but it's ultimately David Bruckner, director of the genre bend in 2000 horror flick The Signal, who steals the show with Amateur Night. It's about a group of some douchey young guys 
who bring home a strange girl from a bar and get much more than they bargained for when she turns out to be a literal monster. The story eventually received a full-on feature film under the title of Siren. Next up is VHS 2 from 2013. So your taste in the VHS series will likely depend on which entry as your personal favorite segment. The second film contains what might be the single best segment in the entire series, Eduardo Sanchez's A Ride in the Park. There's still some not great segments. Really the ideal VHS would be a compilation that takes only the best segments from each entry to receive a really solid horror anthology. All right, on to the top 10. Number 10 is Quiet On from 1965. Ghost stories don't get much more gorgeous than the four in Misaki Kobayashi's sprawling Quiet On. Between two political and wildly lauded epics, Harry Carey and Samurai Rebellion, Kobayashi led what was then Japan's most expensive cinematic production ever, an anthology film with his parts loosely connected by Lafcadio Hearn's collection of Japanese folk tales and Kobayashi's intuitive penchant for surreal sweeping lush sets. Number 9 is Three Extremes from 2004. Three Extremes represents an impressive collaborative effort to highlight East Asian horror in an era when the region's horror films were scoring high profile Western remakes, incorporating segments by directors from three separate nations. The works of Takashi Miike and Park Chan Wook need little introduction here. They largely play to their strengths. Miike's The Box represents the film's strangest, most avant garde segment. Park's cut is more grounded in the here and now, playing like a half satirical commentary on Saw and the extreme horror, torture, porn movement of the genre that was gaining strength at the time. But it's Hong Kong director Fu Chan's dumplings that really brings the wow factor to three extremes. It's an oddly seductive hypnotic thriller, likely to make your stomach churn before it's all over. Number eight is Black Sabbath from 1963. Most of us hear Black Sabbath and immediately think of Ozzy Osbourne and Tony Iommi and classics like War Pigs and Iron Man and Heaven and Hell with Miss Ronnie. Uh, and so many more classic songs. But the band famously took their name from this celebrated anthology film, which spins three tales of Mario Bava-directed horror. The best is the middle chapter, The Word Lack, starring horror icon Boris Karloff as a man who sets out to slay an undead creature. It's hard to talk about this one without spoiling so much, so just go and check it out. Number seven, Tales from the Crypt from 1972. The EC comic series that inspired the 1990s Tales from the Crypt has been inspiring adaptations for quite a bit longer than the 90s. Britain's amicus horror productions were a natural fit to take a crack at the Tales from the Crypt in 72. Being a studio that specialized in horror anthologies, and although the comparatively lackluster Crypt Keeper will have you missing the more charming puck that hosts to come, the stories are bloody good fun. The standout far and away is An All Through the House, in which a woman, played by Joan Collins, believe it or not, is terrorized by an escaped lunatic who can't call the police, given that she just bumped off her own husband minutes earlier and is yet to dispose of the body. What really makes the segment stand out is its Christmas Eve setting. This may also be one of the first cinematic appearances of a killer Santa Claus, from 12 years before Silent Night, Deadly Night kicked off a small-scale moral panic in the U.S., which led to the film being pulled from theaters after only a week. Number 6, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. The spiritual successor to the first two Creepshow films was Tales from the Dark Side. This is a feature film, also an anthology, even more ridiculous and zany than Creepshow. The highlight is probably Cat from Hell. A segment that was originally supposed to be featured in Creepshow 2 about a seemingly evil cat tormenting and stalking a wheelchair-bound old man to punish him for his past misdeeds. Although honestly, my favorite aspect of Tales from the Dark Side movie is the anthology framing story which involves a child chained up in a kitchen with a woman who's planned on cooking him for dinner. Number 5 is Body Bags from 1993. 
John Carpenter's body bags was originally conceived as a gorier, more grotesque spin on the Tales from a Crypt formula. The series was canceled after only a few potential episodes had filmed. Not wanting to lose the material, Carpenter simply assembled his favorites into a feature film. Each segment isn't particularly memorable, except for a closer, which features Mark Hamill as a baseball player who loses an eye and then gains the eye of a serial killer via donation. You can guess where things go from there. What's memorable about Body Bags is the goofy wraparound segments, which feature Carpenter himself as a Crypt Keeper-esque mortician who gleefully hacks apart bodies and drinks from aldehyde. Showing a much lighter-hearted personality than you expect from the director of films like The Thing or Prince of Darkness. Uh, it's fun to watch Body Bags today for the not-so-subtle genre references, uh, another grisly murder in Haddonfield today, and the incredible array of characters and cameos that were lined up, including the likes of Wes Craven as a leering perv, Stacy Keach as a guy re- receiving miracle hair transplants, Charles Napier as a baseball manager, Twiggy as a housewife, reuniting these two uh, from the Blues Brothers, uh, Roger Corman as a doctor, Tom Arnold as a mortician, and Sam Raimi as a corpse. Number four is Creepshow 2 from 1987. Creepshow 2 is very much an 80s horror sequel. It attempts to largely replicate what audience enjoyed about the first film without mucking around too much with the formula, producing a good but not quite great effort in the process. Reducing the number of stories from five to three puts more weight on each entry. Old Chief Woodenhead and the Hitchhiker each have their moments. It's the raft that's really worth the time here though. One of Stephen King's most simple stories makes for superb anthology content. It's a premise that just can't be beat. A group of teens are trapped on a raft in the middle of a lake, stalked by a blob-like creature that dissolves everything it touches with spectacularly gory results. It's like the 80s remake of The Blob, simply cutting out the backstory and subtext to focus on pure primal action. Number three is Dead of Night from 1945. You you can't say with absolute certainty that 1945's Dead of Night was the first film to ever combine a few loosely connected horror stories into an anthology format, but we are willing to say that it's the film that maybe did it first, and actually almost did it the best. It's the rarest of cinematic feats. We've been making horror anthologies for more than 70 years since Dead of Night, with only a few having done it better. Some of that goes to the performances as Walsh actor Marvin Jones is excellent as a man who walks into an English cottage, knowing he'll meet five other guests who hold the key to his fate, and Michael Redgrave is spectacular in his most famous story, The Ventriloquist Dummy. Redgrave's performance is a mentally deteriorating ventriloquist who may or may not be controlled by his own abusive dummy, is something you have to see. You could hardly have had multiple Twilight Zone episodes or even a Goosebumps movies without it. But it's not just the individual stories that make Dead of Night one of the greatest horror anthologies. It's how well they all work together. Number two is Trick or Treat from 2007. Trick or Treat was a rare treat. The film which seems like it would never see the light of day, finally came out and surprised with it was one of my favorite concepts ever. It's an anthology, but one that features plenty of disparate, interesting stories, but also ties its stories together in a distinctly satisfying, chronology-bending way. Director Michael Doherty's debut film sat on a shelf after being delayed for years, which was a great change and it's far and away the best horror anthology of the 2000s. Somewhat less concerned with outright scares, it's instead a celebration of Halloween, the idea of the holiday and of fright itself. The stories and characters intertwine on the same small town throughout Halloween night, intersecting in ways both classical through uh, the ghosts of a long ago tragedy returned, and modern in a covering of female van- wo- wo- werewolves. Sly comedy and great performances from an array of familiar faces, Brian Cox, Dylan Baker, Anna Packin, 
They power each other's segments. Indeed, Trick or Treat is actually best enjoyed through repeat viewings, which reveal the crossovers between each story even better. In the middle of it all is Sam, played by Quinn Lord, the disturbing but somehow lovably round-headed spirit of Halloween, who observes in silence and punishes those who trample over the holiday's traditional observances. It's seminal Halloween night viewing. Number one is Creepshow from 1982. With George Romero directing every segment, Creepshow maintains a remarkable thematic and visual consistency. We also get Stephen King in his screenwriting and acting debut. The stories themselves are wonderful fun from the gothic ghostly Father's Day to the bloody beastly conclusion of the box which features the death of a somewhat irritating Adrian Barbeau. But the highlight is a murderous Leslie Nielsen and the sort of pompous villainous performance that fans of the Naked Gunner airplane have likely never seen before. You owe it to yourself to see Creepshow, if not just for his part alone. So that wraps this episode up. I want to hear from you. Post your top 10 anthology horror movies in the comments. Let me know which movies in my list you agree with and which ones you disagree with. That's it for this episode. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you subscribe. But most of all, make sure you keep it horror. <laughs>